In this video, I'll show you how to prepare this HO scale 3D printed brownstone facade. 3D printers are an indispensable tool when building custom miniatures. It's amazing how user friendly and affordable 3D printing has become over the past few years. I'll show you the steps to finish the facade of this model of a Brooklyn classic, and with a bit of practice you'll soon be able to make a whole city block of them. In the next part of this video series, I'll show you how to make the rest of a brownstone. But for now, let's get started with the facade. Here's how the model comes off the printer. We've got some nice detail. I'll make this available on Thingiverse, but you'll need some supplies to get started. You'll need some Rust-Oleum filler primer, an airbrush, various acrylic paint brushes, some acrylic paints for your airbrush, rubbing alcohol, I'm using 50% isopropyl here, but you can really use any kind. Transparency films, white printer paper, an X-Acto knife, and super glue. First, we have to put down a couple coats of primer. Set up the model in such a way so you can easily spray onto as many surfaces as possible in a well-ventilated area. Using our Rust-Oleum filler primer, Shake the can until you hear the ball rattle inside, and then let's get ready to paint. Working from one side to another, spray even coats up and down the surface of the model until the face is completely covered with primer. Spraying from a distance and moving smoothly helps get even coverage across. Once our first coat of primer is dry to the touch, we can see how we did. It is likely with these models that there will be some flashing and imperfections around the doors and windows. I like putting the first coat of primer down before removing these because it makes the imperfections easier to see. To clean these up, we use the X-Acto knife to cut through and remove any of the excess material. Simply scrape and cut along any edges you notice until all surfaces are clean and square. Now we're ready for the second and final coat of primer. Using the same techniques as the first time around, spray an even coat along the surface of the model and as well as in any spots you may have missed previously. Once the primer is completely dry, we're ready to begin painting. I'm using a Burnt Umber by Com Art Colors. It's a really nice airbrush paint that you can find in most art stores, so let's give it a shake and put some in the airbrush. Brownstones come in a wide variety of colors, so really you can use any color you'd like here. I like to spray a little paint onto a paper towel just to make sure everything is flowing nice and smoothly through the airbrush. Once that's all set, spray an even coat across the surface of the model with the paint like we did before with the primer. Take your time. We want paint to cover all the surfaces of the facade evenly. Then, when you're satisfied, set the model down to dry. For the next part, we want to create a mask for painting the cornice a separate color. A trick for this is done by spraying some of the same base color onto a piece of cardboard, using the profile of the model to create an outline of the pattern we need. From this profile, we can cut out the mask using our X-Acto knife, cutting along the edges marked with paint. When we press the mask up to the surface of the model, we see it almost fits perfectly to accept the profile of the facade. For the cornice, I'm using Golden Naphthol Red, another really high quality airbrush paint. Again, you can really use any color you want here. When we're ready to paint the cornice, keep the mask pressed up against the surface. This mask makes it really easy for us to prevent paint from going anywhere we don't want it to on the surface of the model. Like before, spray evenly until all surfaces of the cornice are covered with paint. There are a lot of little details in the cornice that we have to make sure get painted. I love the glossy look of the golden paints. We'll end up toning it down a bit, but I think it looks really nice at this stage. Although we made the mask, it is likely that there are some areas where paint may have ended up on spots we didn't want it to. So putting some of the base color on a brush, we can easily touch up the areas where paint bled through.
Once all the paint is dry, it's time to really make this model come to life. Using some Vallejo Black, we can create a simple wash by adding some of our rubbing alcohol to the mix. For our applications, it's best to make this wash substantially thin, but it is pretty forgiving, so play around with it until you achieve something you're comfortable working with. Now we can mix and apply this wash to the surface of the model using a brush, but a quicker trick is to use a spray bottle full of our wash and misting it across the surface until the face of the model is completely covered. Using this wash helps create both a really nice stone texture as well as highlight any of the finer details on the face of the model. And here is the model when the wash is completely dry. As you can see, we're left with all the little details highlighted and a really nice stone texture. Our final step in painting is coloring in the window frames. Using a fine bristle brush and some more Vallejo Black, we can fill in all the window frames and doors on the model. We can also paint the top of the cornice while we're at it. For the windows, we can cut the transparency film into strips slightly undersized so they fit into the bay of each brownstone window. And then, we can cut across so they're all the same height. Using some of our super glue, we can fasten our windows to the back of each bay. We have to make sure the transparency film completely covers each window so that there are no gaps in between the model and the transparency film. It is also important to apply glue away from the window itself so that super glue does not ruin the transparency film. The last step is to cut out lines for the windows. Using our X-Acto knife again, we can cut out squares from our printer paper to act as the blinds. And in the same way we applied the transparency film, we glue the blinds to the back of the model using our super glue. I like to stagger the blinds so it looks like they're all pulled down to different lengths. And there we have it. I finished this facade up in a couple hours, so it doesn't take that much time to create a whole block of these. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and share. I hope you get the chance to try and make a couple of these, and if you have any tips or suggestions, please let me know in the comments. The link to the SDL file is in the description. I hope you liked this video, and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.